Hi guys, it's Jordan from BMP Campers. I'm just going to do your kind of video on your uh, Chasson motorhome. So it's the 2017 one here. So we'll start under the bonnet. You've got your new Dragano or Chasson uh, sort of like chassis plate, if you like. So it's basically that original chassis plate has been changed for this one here. Uh, so this is the one that you go off. See there, three and a half ton. You've got here your washer fluid reservoir, brake fluid attached to the servo just behind it. Engine oil goes in through here and you chop, check your engine oil from this dipstick just here. Power steering fluid goes in through this reservoir here at the front. Engine coolant sits in this reservoir over here on the right hand side. And your leisure ba uh, engine battery, sorry, in these uh, Ford chassis sits under the floor in the cab. So you, if you wanted to jump start the vehicle, You've got a positive terminal just here under this little red cover and your negative like it says just here is the uh, engine hoist point basically which is this little thing just here so if you want an earth for your um starting up the vehicle you've got negative just there and positive under the cap just there your diesel filling point is this one just inside the passenger door um, you've also got underneath there your add blue additive point as well. Um, it's one of the smart ones so you can literally just poke the thing straight in. So you haven't got to take it off or anything. Um, but basically it's kind of like a uh, an extra safety thing. So you actually have to have the door open before you can open this up. Um, so just, you know, like I said, just for safety really. Um, so that's your diesel filling point. All of your electronic bits and pieces for the vehicle are in here. So you've got your trip switches for when you're on mains, 12 volt fuses, and your electric hookup point. So, uh, well, your electric charger, sorry. So when you plug a hookup cable into the vehicle, this charger will automatically start working as long as the little light is on down here. Next to that, you've got your freshwater drain, which is this one just here and access to your freshwater ta uh, tank is just there you can also fill up your freshwater tank from here just like that nice and easily and so it's all tucked away inside this locker just here next door to that is your hookup point so if you had your uh, hookup cable plugged into the vehicle that's where you want to put it there um, and that's kind of anything 240 volt any sort of like three pin sockets and things like that you need to have that hookup cable plugged in. And at the back of the vehicle, got a couple of bits, um, not right much in here to actually show you in the actual uh, garage, apart from a couple of sockets down there that you can get to. Um, but this is your sort of boiler vent here, if you like. So that's that. If I go around the other side now. The bonnet. So on the off side here, I'll just run you through very briefly. Um, the, the sort of stuff in the cab is all quite easy to get used to. Um, you've got your reversing camera, which attaches to the rear view mirror up there. Uh, 12, volt pot, 12 volt socket there. Um, all of your fan heater settings just here. Air conditioning, for that switch just there. Um, but other than that, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, obviously all of your radio and bits and pieces of that are all just there. Um, six speed manual gearbox. We've got cruise control, which is all working off just these little bits here on the actual steering wheel itself. And you can kind of like, you've got steering wheel functionality, so you can go through and pick things out on your uh, radio, do whatever you like directly from the steering wheel. Um, front and rear fogs are just here and your main lights on and off switch. So you go one for your side lights and then another one for your main beam. You've then got next to that, your electric adjusting mirrors. So you can literally just choose which mirror you want to move and then basically just move this around like a little joystick and move it as and where you need to. You can lock and unlock the cab from inside, which is always helpful when you're actually in there camping. Um, it means you haven't got to get the, you know, fumble around to find the key and all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you want to lock the cab up. Um, other than that, you know, there's, there's lots of little bits and pieces. Like I've, I'm sure you can lift things up here, there and everywhere to get storage to bits and pieces, but anyway. You'll find all that out nice and easy. Um, the handbrake is a little bit of a different one. This is a classic motorhome thing. Uh, it basically allows you to swivel the seat around if it has got the swivel base. 
um, whether it has or not, I don't know, but this is why they do it. So you can basically, the handbrake is fully on right now, um, but to actually release it, you need to lift it up to the point where it stops and then use it as a normal handbrake and then it will come down, all right? But basically when you set the handbrake, it will set properly and then it will just drop to the floor so that you can still turn the seat around. So even though it's doing this, it is working. Um, you just need to make sure that you go up to the point where it stops and then use it as a handbrake and it will just go down again. So the locker behind is your gas locker. You've got space in here for probably two 13 kilo pro uh, propane bottles. You've got a brand new six kilo in here. Uh, we, only, we only stock the six kilos uh, here. So you've got a reasonably new looking pigtail as well. I'm not sure I can date up there, 2021. So you've got till 26 to replace this because you get five years on those. Um, all of this stuff up here is all just for our testing. So don't worry about any of that. It's all literally, you know, it's all being done. It's all good. The only thing you need to know really um, is that when you change over to a new bottle, you literally just undo this nut here, pop onto your new one, and tighten it on. And turning the bottle on is anti-clockwise around to the left. And turning it off is clockwise around to the right. You have to make sure that you turn the bottles off before you start driving for obvious reasons really, but mainly the fact that if you crashed, you don't want you know pressurized gas pumping out all over the place it's uh, the last thing you want so make sure that you do that um these two vents just here are for your fridge um we've mentioned already that the awning light is going to be replaced tomorrow morning so don't worry about that um the, the actual power is there it's all working but it's just that only half of it was actually coming on so we wanted it to be done properly so uh, that's why that's being done um the toilet cassette locker you bring the toilet out nice and easily like that so you literally lift up on the uh, orange tab there and then pull the whole thing out towards you once you've done that all you need to know really is you empty it out from here and when you are emptying it out you need to make sure that you hold the little orange button down there at the back um, because it's basically like a pressure release valve and it'll uh, help you massively I promise um, You've got a fresh water flush, which is what the blue pipe is there. So you haven't got to worry about any separate flush fluids or anything like that. It's all literally done directly from your fresh water tank. So as long as you've got a little bit of water in your fresh tank, you'll be good to go for that. Your wastewater drain is this one just down here. So if you turn that handle just there, the wastewater will drop out through this white hose. And then at the back of the vehicle, obviously you've got um, access to the bed, essentially. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what... Oh, okay, so it just basically gives you a little bit of access. So you can close that over there. Oh, that's cool. Um, right, so you can literally have access to the underneath here. The garage, as you probably well know, is absolutely huge. Um, but if you did need to get through to here for whatever reason, then you can do. Uh, these little bits here are for your ladder which, you know, they have to go through like this, otherwise it's just not strong enough, um, especially to sort of carry a weight up there. Um, so, yeah, that's all good. Just wanted to show you it all opened up, really. So, we'll go inside now. Let's go to the more interesting part, really. Um, so, yeah, all as it should be. Obviously, all of the windows and all of the lights and things like that have all been gone through as part of the habitation check. But, you know, I'm not going to go through on the video, show you each and every one of them, uh, sort of opening and closing. So, um, but, you know, they, they all work very, very similarly. So you've got a, a fly screen for here, which comes down like that and hooks over the bottom one. So you squeeze this back to lift that out. And then to lift this actual uh, blackout blind, squeeze these two bits together lift the whole thing up and then it clips back in again to that one. So you can then, if you wanted to, um, squeeze these two back in and then pull all the way down and then the fly screen will come with it. So you see the fly screens there and then just release that and allow it to go up. So it's all so easy because it literally works on tension. So there's little tension bits in the corners. Um, and so you can literally pull this down and just, it'll just go back up on its own basically. Um, so that's that, that's how they work, nice and easy. Um, and the actual windows themselves, just undo all of these little clips. You can open it up to whatever, you know, however however far you want to. Um, or you can also, if you look at the shape of these little clips, you can pull them over and then hook them in there halfway. 
and do that all the way around. And then it basically means that your uh, window is on a vent. So you can literally lock them all in like that. And then, you know, you could do that on all the windows even. Uh, it won't let any water to come into the vehicle or anything, but it just leaves you with a tiny little gap there at the bottom uh, so that you won't get any sort of condensation or damp building up inside the vehicle if you're going to leave it for a long period of time. Um, that's kind of the idea of that. Or obviously, you know, if it's hot outside and you didn't want to, you wanted to lock the window, but you didn't want to stop the breeze coming through, you could do that there as well. Okay, so that's how the blinds and the windows work. Um, bed, obviously you've got the little, you'll have a little key on your fob there that you need to pop in there and then you can, you know, raise and lower the bed. These cupboards, as you probably know, come down with the bed. So just watch out when you, you know, make sure, that, make sure there's nobody sitting underneath it when you do that. Um, but yeah, so basically it's all pretty simple. So I'll turn this off quickly. This is your heating and hot water. I'm going to turn all this off so that I can show you it all working from, from, you know, from off basically. So your main sort of control panel is this part over here. Uh, main on and off switch, top the left, just there. Main light switch is that one there, and water pump is that one. You've then got your awning light switch, which like I said to you, does work. It's just a way of replacing the light. Um, so that's what those four bits are up there. Down the bottom, this is all basically just uh, level indicators. So press this one here to show you your leisure battery voltage. So pretty much absolutely full. Vehicle battery voltage. Same again, two thirds, nearly, nearly all the way full. Fresh water level. So you've got about a quarter of a tank of water, and then you can set the dimmer for your lights with this one. Um, if you had a hookup plugged into the vehicle, there'll be a little light next to this. And if your engine was running, there should be a little light next to this one. Other than that, it's so simple. It's, it's you know, it's uh, nice and easy to use. The uh, Truma iNet ready, this is your boiler, basically. So whatever, one it's sort of highlighted it's flashing over is what you're going to click on so this one here with the little van and the temperature dial that's your heating so click on that one and then you can literally just set your temperature to whatever you want or turn it back off sorry about being a bit shaky by the way can't really hold it so easily uh, the next one along this one here is your hot water so you can choose eco hot or boost that's up to you so basically that just heats whatever water is up inside the boiler. And then the next one along is telling the boiler what to use to do it. So fuel is your gas. Mix one is gas and electric. Mix two is gas and a little bit more electric. Electric only or electric two, which is a bit more electric. All right, so you can go through and choose what you want to use. Fuel, like I said, is the gas. And that's it. The last one there is your fan and the, the heating isn't on at the moment, so that won't work. But basically that's, you know, if that, I hope that makes sense to you, but it, that it is quite, it's quite simply, whichever one you're hovering over. So like I said to you, heating, click on it, and then just set your temperature or off. Hot water, boost, hot or eco or off, and then choose your fuel. And that's it. If you want to turn it all the way off, Press and hold on the middle button. And that's it. So that's your bits and pieces up there. You then obviously got your full size fridge. Um, fridge works in three different ways. So I just thought I'd mention as well, you've got your boiler, which is uh, boiler, your freezer, sorry. The freezer part of your fridge is up here. So this will be the part that gets sort of icy and frosty first before anything else. Um, but all I want to show you really, it's nice and simple to use. If you've got a green light on there, it means that it's on and it's working one way or another. It means it's definitely on. So if you want to see what's going on, just click the button once and then you get a little digital screen come up here. It's then showing us we lit on gas and we're at full power. That's all that means. And then if you want to change the, uh, the way that it's working, make sure that the screen's back on, click this button here. That's auto, so you don't want it on that really. You've then got mains hookup. So if you had a hookup plugged in, you could use that. Or you've got 12 volt, and that's for when your engine's running only. So basically, if you've got your gas plugged in and no hookup, you want to choose gas. It'll literally just light up, and that's it. That's all you have to do. You just leave it alone then, and it'll just do its thing. 
Um, the gas and the mains electric function on the fridge are the two that will get the fridge cold uh, the quickest and actually on their own. Um, the 12 volt function on it, the battery symbol there, like I said to you, that only works when the engine's running, but it also doesn't get the fridge cold on its own. Um, so you really need to make sure that you get the fridge cold first before you then switch over to 12 volt. Um, the reason you have to change over to 12 volt when you're driving is that you can't leave your gas on, obviously, when you're driving. And the other, obviously, you can't leave a, a hookup cable plugged into it either. So you can't use the gas, you can't use the mains. So that's why they give you the option of using it on 12 volts um, for when you're driving. Now, the reason that that works is that you've got what's called a split charge relay. So all decent motorhomes have got one. When you start the engine up, the uh, alternator charges your leisure battery. And then from there, you've got a split charger. So the power comes from your engine battery down there, all the way through to your leisure. And then in that little loop there is your 12 volt feed for the fridge. So when you start the engine up, you'll be able to use that 12 volt function there straight away. All right. So before you start using your boiler and doing those things up there, um, the heating's okay. But when, if you want to start using your hot water, you need to turn your pump on and then just come over to your tap here and just do exactly what I'm going to do. So literally just pull the water, pump kicks in, I can hear it there, nice and quiet. Make sure you're over on the hot side and then just switch it off. If the pump turns itself off, like that, that means that there's plenty of pressure there and there's no leaks. If there was a big leak somewhere, the pump wouldn't turn itself off like that. Uh, the, the pumps only turn themselves off when they get to pressure, so there's no leaks anywhere on this entire vehicle. Um, the reason that you have to do that is that before you do that, you don't know if your boiler is full of water or not. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you lift that up and just double check that your boiler's full, and then you can go ahead and use your, your hot water you know, on the boiler there, um, however you like. Um, but it's just really important to do that before you start you know, trying to light it up and things like that. Um, let me just see if there's anything else that I need to... So load the storage down there. What else have we got? Um, lots and lots of storagey bits. So the fridge, like I said to you, it's three-way. I will turn that off now. So like I said, if you've got a little green light in there, it means it's, doing, it's working one way or another. Push and hold on it, we'll turn it all off. And that's it, that's all you need to do. Uh, you've got various light switches around the vehicle. Uh, so you've got this one, make, sort of like your main lights here, if you've got your bed up, does those. And then like I said, it, you've got little switches on the ends of these nice LED strip ones. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's all sorts of switches. You, you'll find them all obviously, and uh, you know work out which ones you want and don't want. Um, otherwise you've got, a three burner hob up here. So you need a clicker or an igniter or some description to light any of these up. Um, they're nice and simple, like, you know, you just use them like you would at home. Uh, the only other thing that's different really is that these have got, well, it's not different actually, your household ones, I've got one too, but you've got a thermocouple on each of these and you do on all of your gas appliances on the van actually. Uh, what a thermocouple does is it senses burning gas. So when anything gas is lit up, thermocouple was the thing that allows that gas to come through so if you had this on you know for example if it looked like that and it was lit up and it was on perfectly well and then somebody blew the flame out and you didn't turn this to the off position for a few seconds the gas would just carry on pumping through obviously because you're still allowing it to come through but what the thermocouple does is it recognizes that there's no more burning gas coming through and it will stop the gas from coming through after about five or ten seconds or so so essentially you can't you know, fill the van up with uh, unburnt gas. So, that's your cooker. You've then got down here the grill. So the grill works slightly differently. Still the same on the dial to allow the gas to come through. Exactly the same there. Uh, but the difference is you've got this piezo igniter. So they can be a little bit noisy, but that is literally just how they are. They've, they've always been the same. Uh, and just so you know, the reason that people use these piezo igniters is because they're so reliable. Um, a lot of the electronic ignition, you know, I'm not trying to say anything about, you know, th th there's loads of vans that have got electronic ignition on their vans, but they do tend to be the first things to go wrong on the uh, grills and the cookers and all that. So 
um, having the piezo igniter there is much more of a sort of manual, simple way of doing it. So literally just push and turn on this when you're pressing down on the uh, piezo igniter and it will light up. Um, under there, what have we got? Just, uh, access to the um, pipe there for your heating. Um, anything else? Pipes and things like that. That's all your uh, fresh and waste, uh, fresh and hot water. Draw up there, which you can lock over, obviously. Um, okay, so what else have we got? So obviously you've got your two sort of like separate shower and toilets back here. So I'm not going to show you how this works. It is nice and simple. Um, but yeah, so essentially you, you'll have a light in here, uh, which is up there. I'm not sure exactly where the button is for that actually that must be one of these ones there you go so your light in there works from the big main switch at the bottom and then you've got another switch a couple of switches there for this main light above your head as well you've also got a light there at the back of the bed which looks really nice um, your air conditioning here has all been tested as part of the habitation check and i actually heard him get it all working really really well um, on the roof so that works really nicely Got a little magnet strip down there. Uh, bathroom, nice and simple again. I don't need to show you how the sink works. It's all just hot and cold water. You know, it's the same all the way around. Um, the only thing I'd need to show you really is your toilet. So again, really, really nice and simple. Press the blue button down there to get your pump. Put in your flush fluid around the toilet. And then to drain it out, put on this lever this way to drain it into the cassette. So you see there, it's all gone, drained into the cassette, and then close it back over when you finish draining it out. Um, it's really important to close the flap back over again when, once you've drained it out, um, because if you don't do that, you won't be able to take the cassette out from outside. It would have locked itself in place. Um, so that's really important. But yeah, like I said, the bed is there. I'll just pop the key in and show you how that works so you pop your key in there put it in the right way it's always helpful oh, that's typical isn't it can't do it with one hand on the video <laughs> all right well oh there you go just use it right okay <laughs> take that back literally just use the button there so pushing the down button there allows the bed to come all the way down and then you've got a couple of straps up there as well there is a light up top there as well but i just wanted to show you it all working really nicely there's no nasty knocks or anything like that because they can be a bit noisy sometimes it goes all the way up to the top and the li limiter switch turns it off so it doesn't just keep on going and going so that's working exactly like you should and that's it so i think i've shown you everything i can i don't think there's much else to show you on it i uh, tried to cover everything there is so if there's anything that you think I've missed out or anything you want going over again, just let us know. Uh, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van. Thanks very much.